I found that as more and more people start using um, Microsoft Stream on SharePoint that I'm getting some questions back about, hey, I've created a link that should work for everybody in an organization or everybody within a specific group. But um, I'm getting a lot of access requests back from people who are in that group or people, you know, who work for my company. And that has to do with the underlying access of SharePoint. So let's demonstrate what I mean. I've got a video right here. Megan Bowen is up in the corner. She's going to share this video with everyone in Contoso. So we're going to click on share. She's going to click the share button. She's going to open this up. Everybody in Contoso. She wants to let them view the video, but not download it. So she's going to block download, hit apply, and then she's going to copy that link. So this link should work for everybody at Contoso. And we can prove that by bringing Alex Wilbur's machine online. So we're going to open up Edge, and we will just paste in that link from Megan as it was. So there's the link, the video works just fine. Now, what I believe is happening is people are, are taking the video and they're wanting to reshare it with someone else. So they're either clicking the share button up here and they only have the option for people with existing access or more likely, they're just taking the, the link up here at the top, copying that and saying, hey, so-and-so, you should check out this video. Now, when you do this, it uses the underlying access to the video itself. And whenever you created the link, the sharing link, you it's specific to that specific like URL that gets created. So if I copy the bar, the, the URL at the bar at the top of my browser, and we go over to Nestor, who is also part of Contoso, so he's a member of the company, the original link would work for him, but because I've taken the full URL, the full path to the actual file, it's going to use the underlying access, which is that he doesn't have access to that particular file. So it says right here, you don't have access. He clicks request access. And then Megan would have to approve access to that video. So there's kind of two different ways to, um, to share files within SharePoint. There's generating links, which is kind of the modern way. This is how OneDrive, SharePoint, um, Google Drive, Dropbox, all of these different sharing platforms, they use this ability to create um, unique links to the videos. So if I go back here, what's great is if I click share, I can create different links that have different settings depending on you know who I'm sending it to. So I could say, you know, this group of people has the ability to edit it. These people can view it. And it's a good way to, to generate different ways to get to the same file with different settings, expirations, all kinds of cool stuff. But whenever we're talking about hosting video, we're getting out of the mindset of sharing files collaboratively. And we're talking about like communications concepts of hosting video long term for mass consumption. We have to think about the underlying access, kind of like how a file share used to work. We want to give people access to the file so that no matter how they get a link to it, they can watch it because they have access, basically. So the way that we do this from like a, an underlying hosting standpoint is we use something called manage access in SharePoint. So rather than relying on just the share link right here, we would go down to the bottom and click manage access. And now manage access can be done at one of three levels. You can do this at the file level on a video by video basis. You can do this at the folder level. So you can make it open to everybody at the folder and every video you put into that folder will get access. Or you can do it at the entire site level. So it kind of goes like from small to big file, folder, or site. So we're gonna do it at the file level here to start. We're gonna hit manage access. And you can see here that I've generated one link. I've also got the owners of this group and I wanna add another group of people to be able to view these files. Now I can click the plus right here to grant access. And then I can type in any group of people that I want. So let's say like the entire sales organization. 
So there's U.S. sales. The members of that group will be invited. My personal preference, I would say don't notify those people. So we'll uncheck the notification because we don't want to email them and let them know. We just want to give them, you know, underlying access. So if they happen to get it another way, they're not going to get an access request message. So we're going to click grant access. And now if I go back over to somebody who's in that group and I were to paste in that URL, they would get access to that particular video. And you can see here that Nestor still doesn't have access because he's not a member of the sales organization. So let's go back over to Megan. We're going to give access at the folder level, show you how to do that. So if you want to go at the folder level, you can use this little tip at the top of your video. You can see the name of the video right here. You click that drop down, and it will tell you actually where this is stored. This is in Office 365 Adoption in a folder called Teams Tip Tuesday. So we're going to click on that. That's going to open up that folder where all the files are living. We're going to hit Documents to go up one level. And then in Teams Tip Tuesday, if we hit this dot, dot, dots right here, the more actions, we click on that. Now we also have Manage Access for the folder. And I'm going to do this one a little bit different. Rather than doing the, the Grant Access Plus button, let's give them access in a way that they can't download the, the video. So this is called Restricted View. This is under the Advanced section at the bottom. So we're going to go advanced to go into, you know, a little bit more classic type of SharePoint. And you can see that the members, the owners, and the visitors of this site already have specific level access. So what we can do is we can stop inheriting permissions. So we stop getting that from the site. And we can generate unique permissions for this particular folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grant permissions. And then I'm going to use a group that is built into SharePoint called Everyone except external that is built into any kind of SharePoint in any tenant. And then under show options, we're going to uncheck sending an email notification because we don't want to let everybody know. And then under edit, we're going to select restricted view right here. So we click that, we hit share. And then now if we go over to Nestor and refresh that page, now the video will come up and I can watch that video. And you'll notice something else. I also don't have a download button right here because that restricted view access is you know, taking over and it's not allowing the person to download. So finally, another little tip here before I let you go is how do you check access for something? So say that I gave, if I refresh this page here, Say that I gave everyone except external users, that's literally everybody in the company, if I gave them a restricted view and I want to spot check somebody and see what they have, I can hit check permissions right here. And then I can type in anyone's name, so Nestor Wilk. If I bring him up and hit check now, this tells me that he has restricted view access and it tells me that he has that because he's in the everyone except external users. If I go into the video itself right here, we go back to manage access. At the bottom, we hit advanced. We get to the same page, but it's for this specific video. And there's the sales members right there. So again, I can hit check permissions. I can see Nestor. I can check now and I can see, well, he has restricted view because everyone except external. And the reason why he has that is because the container the video is in has restricted view, which is a larger container than what this specific video is in. Now, if I check somebody else like Alex Wilbur right here and hit check now, we can see that he has restricted view, but he also has contribute view. And the reason why he has that is because he's a member of US sales. So that's why it would work for him, but not for Nestor, unless we gave everyone access at that folder level. So I hope that this kind of makes sense and, you know, um, clarifies the fact that, like, even though you're sharing a file with like a unique URL, that URL is the thing that has to be clicked on in order for like somebody else to, to view that, because those permissions are unique to that specific link that gets created, which is great because 
then you have, you know, a multitude of settings you can do based off of the different links that you post in different places. But if you're hosting video for long-term broad consumption, you want to think about that underlying access level and you do that with manage access, which is a built-in function of SharePoint. So I hope that clarifies things a little bit. If you have questions, um, leave me a comment down below. I'm happy to answer those. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.